Good evening, everyone. Did you know that if you disagree with Christianity and her teachings, if you question Christianity, if you challenge Christianity, if you put Christianity to the test, if you investigate Christianity, did you know that you are an unbeliever? That you are a sinner and that you are going to go into a place of fiery eternal torment. Do not be afraid of Christians and do not be afraid of Christianity. Be in fear, that is be in reverent fear of our Creator, God the Father, and respect the things that He says and respect and listen to the one that He sent to us. Christianity is made up of men. Christianity wants to direct, it wants to control what you think and what you believe. Christianity and Christians, these are her children, they view anyone who disagrees with them, questions them, challenges them, investigates them, puts them to the test as a threat. And we see this being played out on YouTube as I speak. Now in this video, I'm gonna talk about Judgment Day. What really is Judgment Day? And more importantly, when is Judgment Day? You see, Christianity teaches that if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and become a Christian, that you are going to be one of many in a long line waiting your turn to be judged, either to go into heaven or to go into some place of eternal torment. This is not taught anywhere in scripture. This is a teaching that issues forth out of Christianity. And that Christianity teaches this, that this is what Judgment Day is, shows that Christianity doesn't know what it's talking about. And that Christianity has children that she teaches, they too don't get it. They have simply been misled. Now, in order to understand Judgment Day, we must come to an understanding of how day is used in this context. Now, if one looks at the, uh, looks at that Noah's day, for example, well, was that referring to a literal 24 hour day? No. I'm pretty sure many of you have heard the expression in the day of the horse and buggy. Is that referring to a literal 24 hour day or is it referring to a span of time? Many of you may have heard in my grandfather's day, is that referring to a literal 24 hour day or is it referring to a span of time? Now see, I'm an old school dude. And even to this day, I may use the expression back in the day. Is that referring to a literal 24 hour day or a span of time? So judgment day is not a literal 24 hour day. It is a span of time in the future. Now, let me put to rest this right at the outset, because I don't want any of you to be afraid. You see, Christianity teaches fear. It wants you to be afraid that you're going to go to some place of eternal torment and that uh, you're going to be judged to go to that place. I say to you, don't be afraid. Why is that? Because no one today is in a state of being judged today. Christianity teaches that a person is being judged based on the things that they're doing right now, then what Christianity is essentially teaching is that Christ's sacrifice was for nothing. So don't be afraid. You are not going into some place of eternal torment and you will not be judged on anything that you are doing today. In other words, you will not be judged based on any sins that you commit in your lifetime. Now it is written, we don't want to take advantage of that tidbit of knowledge knowing that we're not going to be uh, judged based on what um, any sense we commit in this lifetime to give us license to go out and sin. That would be taking advantage of God's kindness and God's grace. So we want to do the right thing and not intentionally sin. Don't join the world in this mindset of intentionally committing sin. But what you just heard there is a very valuable piece of information. No one will be judged based on the sins that they commit today. And I'm going to address that and show you where this is written. Christianity isn't going to show you this. 
Now let's first talk about why God sent his son. And I'm going to direct you to John chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. And there we read, For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This paints a picture of Christianity. Christianity has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. It believes in Christianity. In other words, Christianity believes in Christianity. Christianity believes in a book called the Bible. Christianity does not believe in the person that God sent, his only son, that is his only begotten son. So why is it that no one today will be judged based on any sins they commit in our lifetimes? It's because we do not know what we do. Think about this. Did Jesus condemn the woman caught in adultery? No. He said to her, woman, look around you. You see, all the persons who had stones in their hands who were going to stone her, the oldest left and then the youngest left, and there was only Jesus and this woman. And Jesus says, woman, look around you. Who condemns you? The woman said, no one. And Jesus says, neither do I condemn you sin no more. Here's another example. In his last few moments before he died, Jesus cried out to the Father in prayer and asked the Father to forgive his persecutors and those who would put him to death. Why? Because they do not know what they do. In other words, they don't know what they're doing. But yet Jesus asked that they be forgiven. Jesus didn't condemn them. Here's another one. The man who died, that criminal who died when Jesus died, who died next to him. What did Jesus promise that condemned man who was not his follower? Paradise. So what are you Christians doing out here when you point fingers at others and you're condemning them and you're judging them to some place of fiery eternal torment? What are you doing? Jesus didn't do none of this. So why are you doing it? So why is it that no one today is in a state of being judged is because we do not know what we do. Would a righteous judge judge someone because they're ignorant? No. Now Christianity and Christians, many of their mindsets is that, okay, look, we warned you, we told you, now you know. No, those persons still don't know. And you know what? Many of you Christians don't know either. You think you know, but you do not know. None of us know what we do and why is that because we are imperfect we're flawed we're sinful by nature we're not perfect yet so we will not be judged because we do not know what we do but we will be judged in the future when we come to know what we do that time is not yet and that ties into what judgment day is and when judgment day is now here's another scripture to show that no one today is being judged. And this is found at John chapter 12, verse 47 and 48. Jesus is speaking here and Jesus says, If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. Uh-oh, uh-oh, listen to that, many of you Christians. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. Hmm, that's very interesting. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. So you Christians, why are you doing this? Pointing fingers at others and condemning them to some fiery place of eternal torment. When the person that you claim that you believe in and follow didn't do that. Let me repeat this because this is very important. If anyone hears my words but does not keep them, I do not judge that person, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. There is a judge for the one who rejects me and does not accept my words. The very words I have spoken will condemn them when? At the last day. 
You see, at the last day, we will know what we do. So what is Judgment Day? Judgment Day is a span of time. It's a time period where we will be taught God's righteousness, that is knowing good and bad for ourselves. Now, to understand this even more, we must understand that death and the resurrection are involved here. In order to enter into Judgment Day, one must first die and then be resurrected from the dead. We repeat that. In order for one to enter into that time period called Judgment Day, one must first die and be resurrected back to life again from the dead. It is within that 1,000 year kingdom that we, that all who are resurrected, and that's everyone, because everyone's going to die, everyone will die, and everyone will be resurrected. That's a promise Jesus made at John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29. But all are resurrected into Christ's 1,000 year kingdom. Within that 1,000 year kingdom, we will be taught to know good and bad for ourselves. That is God's righteousness. So when our education is completed, we will know what we do. As opposed to right now, we don't know what we do. So in those future days, when we will know what we do and we commit a sin, we do so with full knowledge. There will be no more sacrifices for any sins that we commit in those future days. Any sins that we commit once we know what we do are the unforgivable sin. That's what that is. Why? Because there will be no more sacrifices to forgive those sins. Today, a sacrifice was made in our behalf through Christ Jesus. So when we commit a sin, those sins are forgiven. They're forgiven. Now, if one goes to uh, Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the Apostle Paul wrote, The wages sin pays is death. That is, the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is not eternal torment. So please think about that. Don't be afraid. Christianity wants you afraid. I don't want you afraid. I want you hopeful and joyful that you are not going to be punished and tormented for all eternity in some made-up hellfire. The wages that sin pays is death. What does that mean? That means that any sins that we commit in our lifetimes are forgiven or paid for by virtue of our deaths. Our deaths are full payment for any sins we commit in our lifetimes. The Apostle Paul also said something there at Romans chapter 6, verse 7. He writes, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Let me repeat that. Because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Is that not in alignment with what he wrote there at Romans chapter 6, verse 23? That the wages sin pays is death? So anyone who has died has been set free from sin. So when we go into our graves, when we die, we've been set free from sin. So when we're resurrected from the dead, there is no sin on us. We come out of the grave with no sin. And we come out of the grave entering into that paradise here on earth that Jesus promised that condemned man. That is, we enter into Christ's 1,000-year kingdom over the earth. And within that kingdom, we will learn God's righteousness. We will learn knowing good and bad for ourselves. At God's determination, not any human being, but at God's determination, he will know when we know good and bad. So if we commit a sin, we do so with full knowledge, knowing what we do. And all of that occurs after we have been resurrected from the dead. On this side of death, no one today is judged. Our sins are paid for thanks to Jesus. That's why individuals should be joyful and hopeful and not in fear of going into a place of eternal torment. Christianity comes across as if it hates God's creation. To be out here teaching something so cruel when Jesus, his death, by virtue of his death, paid for our sins. 
the wages sin pays is death. Anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Let that sink in. So don't be afraid. Be encouraged that no one has been judged today. Now, will we be judged in the future? Yes, but only after we have been educated and made perfect and we know what we do. Judgment Day is a span of time that will exist over the earth when we know what we do, when we've been educated to know what is good and bad for ourselves. And we will be judged based on that, not on what we do today. We'll be judged based on what we know is good and what is bad, what is a sin and what is not a sin. Today, we don't know that. One can have an opinion about that. You see, each one thinks in their own minds that they're right. You've got Christian denominations over here that may say, well, that's a sin. And another Christian denomination over there who will say, well, no, that's not a sin. So who do you believe? They're believers and they're unbelievers. They're unrighteous and they're righteous. See, each one has their own opinion. That's what it, what it boils down to. Christianity does not have its act together and Christianity does not have a monopoly over God and Christ and what they teach. That's why it's important that we cling to the one that God sent and listen to him and don't listen to Christianity. Christianity does not know what it's talking about and Christianity will take exception to anyone who says that about them. I don't mind doing that because I used to be a Christian for many years. I had to disqualify myself from teaching those things because Christianity wanted this. It wanted my mind. It wanted control over this. It wanted me wide open so it can pour things into my mind and then seal it up and say, well, you now have the truth. No. Once Christianity gets a hold of you, it does not want to let go. If it gets you in its teeth, it doesn't want to let go. So don't be afraid. You are not being judged today. Christ forgave our sins. Being a Christian has nothing to do with it. Christ never told his followers to be called Christians anyway. It is a free gift that God sent us through his son or in his son that our sins be forgiven. There is no prerequisite to accept Jesus Christ as one as Lord and Savior, to become a Christian, as Christians will tell you. It's a free gift that God has given all of mankind. Think about this too. Why would Jesus teach at John chapter 5, verse 28 and 29? Do not marvel at this, for all in their graves, all in their graves will hear his voice and come out. He didn't say Christians. He didn't say just those who believe in him. He said, all. That's a free gift God has given all of the human family. Christianity wants to usurp that and apply that to themselves. All is all. Everyone. Jesus promised that condemned man paradise. He wasn't a follower of Christ. Jesus did not condemn that woman caught in adultery. She wasn't a follower of Christ. Jesus asked the Father to forgive those who would persecute him and who would put him to death. They certainly were not his followers. They hated him. But what did Jesus say there? At uh, John chapter 12, verse 47, I'm going to conclude the video with what Jesus says here. If anyone hears my words, but does not keep them, I do not judge that person. Hmm. For I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. So be encouraged. Do not be afraid. Hold your head up high. Rejoice. That we have a loving God and we have a Lord who died for our sins. Christianity isn't teaching that. Christianity wants you fearful. I want you joyful. I want you hopeful. I want you encouraged. Be encouraged. This is Ardrome Harris, the disciple. Thank you for listening.